to this week's 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. I'm your host, Amelia Borland, occupational therapist, owner and founder of Higher Standards Caregiver Training. And I bet you're wondering why I just snuck up on my transfer training dummy. Well, I have a really good answer for that question coming up in our first tip today. But uh, before we get to that, if you are new to 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday, then welcome. Here's what's about to happen. I'm going to give you two super valuable tips in about 10 minutes. Uh, the first tip is going to be for caregivers. It always is. And the second tip is for caregiving organizations. Something else you need to know. This is for educational purposes only, y'all. So if anything that I say reminds you of someone, maybe even yourself, who you think needs to be seen or assessed or treated by a licensed healthcare provider, then please make sure that you are going out and getting that appropriate treatment or advocating for that appropriate assessment from the correct provider. As this is not a substitute for health or medical advice, and it is not a substitute for a therapeutic relationship, it is truly for educational purposes only. So that said, let's talk about why I was sneaking up on my tra transfer training dummy there. This has everything to do with my first tip today for caregivers, and it has to do with caring for folks who have dementia. So let me let me kind of get into that a little bit more. So a lot of times the biggest questions that come up when I'm doing caregiver trainings uh, for for people who are caring for folks who have dementia is um, wanting to understand how we can uh, best manage things like behaviors, aggression, agitation, things like that. And one of the things that I always like to point out, to, uh, and this is this is the first tip for today. One of the things that I always like to point out is that we can help people stay calm and we can help people to participate in their care more and be less frightened and afraid if we approach them from the front. So I want you to think about this. So the first tip today is to, if you're caring for someone with dementia, approach them from where they can see you. Um, and here's why that's so important. A lot of times uh, when folks have dementia, or frankly, um, there can be so many reasons why, why as we age, someone may not hear you coming. Um, perhaps the, the field of vision has shrunk, and so they might not be able to see you coming from the sides. Um, uh, when we are approaching people from behind, to provide care or to speak to them for the first time, whatever it is, we are surprising them. Um, and we don't want to do that. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of someone who has dementia. So say you might already be confused. You're not perhaps sure where you are. Things are feeling unfamiliar. Um, uh, perhaps you do have a sensory uh, uh, issue. Maybe you're not able to see as in all of your visual fields as well as you used to, which is quite common um, at certain stages of dementia. Perhaps in addition, you have a hearing deficit, which of course doesn't have to ha have anything to do with dementia, but many people have hearing deficits as they age. Um, so let's say you're already not quite sure exactly what's going on, and suddenly someone comes up from at you from behind and either begins to speak or even worse, touches you. Your natural response is probably going to be, at the best, quite surprised, or um, at the worst, fearful, um, angry, or perhaps even could stimulate that fight or flight response. And you might turn around and, and try and defend yourself. So one of the key things to think about when we are caring for folks with dementia and understanding their perspective is that we want to approach them from where they can see us. All right, so that is tip number one. Tip number two, if you've been following uh, in the recent weeks for 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday, then you know that right now we are talking about documentation in caregiving organizations and the reasons why documentation is so important. So the reason that we're gonna talk about today that documentation is so important for caregiving organizations. And this is whether you're medical, of course, or non-medical, is that documentation is a record of someone's status, right? It's a record of how well they can participate or how clearly they're thinking 
or even how frequently they're using the restroom, right? And so when we have good documentation of those things, it allows us to see when something has changed. And often we will see a change in activity or uh, behavior or routine before, um, uh, before it's clear that there might be something really significant going on, before it becomes an emergent situation, a really obvious situation. So it's very important to have a good documentation record so that we can see how someone is changing over time and we can see easily if there is a sudden change in someone, whether it's their cognition, whether it's their routine, whether it's a physical capability, whatever it is, whether it's pain, these are things that we need to be documenting over a period of time, again, so that we can see if there is a change so that then we can report that change to the right person so that steps can be taken to make sure that the person we're caring for is taken care of, that they get whatever uh, assistance or medical intervention or whatever they need. Um, so that is so, so important. Um, obviously, it's important for the healthcare outcomes and quality of life of the people that we're caring for. But frankly, if you are a non-medical caregiving organization or, or really truly any caregiving or organization, being able to notice status changes, tell someone about it who can do something about it, um, and, and have that thing be done to, to take care of the person that you are caring for, the earlier you can do that, the longer you're going to have the privilege of caring for that person, right? The more you're going to prevent things like preventable hospitalizations, the more you're going to prevent things that may require them to then move on to a higher level of care. So it's not just good for the person that you're caring for, really and truly, it's also good for the organization itself. Um, so that was tip number two for caregiving organizations today, understanding that documentation is a really, really important way that we can see and track changes over time in the folks that we care for. So we can see if there is a change and we can alert the correct person to step in and help if help is needed. Um, okay, I did wanna save some time to go over this question that came in based on last week's 10 Minute Two Tip Tuesday. So, one, so this question that came in was, why do, um, why do caregivers struggle more with documenting for people who have dementia? And the fact is that it's probably not just non-medical caregivers who struggle more when documenting for folks with dementia, but, but really everyone. And here's why, or here's, there, frankly, there are a lot of reasons why. Um, but one of the reasons is that sometimes people who have dementia are perfectly physically fine right? Um, uh, but, the, uh, but they have a, 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 they have a cognitive issue. They have a memory issue. You know, they have the, the deficits re related to their ability to process information or recall that we associate with dementia, but physically they can be totally fine. Um, so there are a couple of things about that that can make documenting more challenging. One is that, um, if you are not trained, if you're not educated, as to what, um, what those cognitive changes can mean for someone's behavior or someone's ability to participate or um, for their responses to things, then it's really easy to misinterpret the, the um, impairment that someone might have as simply a behavioral issue. And so that makes documenting challenging. Um, and the second reason is it's, it's pretty easy to write down if someone has a has a physical need, right? And how you help them with that physical need. It's a lot more challenging to write down or document how you have assisted someone um, with a cognitive need. So those are some of the reasons why it's really important that, that caregivers, whatever level they're working at, including non-medical caregivers, be trained really well in working with folks with dementia if they're working with folks with dementia um, and be really well trained specifically on how to document that care so that um, that person's status 
is accurately documented so that that care and the quality of that care being delivered um, is accurately documented, et cetera. So uh, much appreciated that, that question that came in. If you have any questions, if you have any topics that you would like covered on 10 Minute to, to Tip Tuesday, then please feel free to um, post a question or comment, et cetera, in the comments below after this video is posted. Um, and I will do my absolute best to answer those questions for you. All right. Until next time, though, guys, that's it for me today. It has been, uh, this is your week's 10 Minute to Tip Tuesday. I will be back next Tuesday um, uh, to deliver two more super helpful tips and answer any questions that come in. In the meantime, y'all make sure you stay healthy, stay well, and most of all, take care. Bye, y'all.